Good morning, everyone, from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Wednesday, December 29, 2021. And we have been doing a morning Bible study comparing ourselves to the Word of God so that we can make the adjustments we need as disciples so we are not being directed by tradition or culture or the teaching of men that conflict with the doctrine of Scripture. And today we will look at Galatians chapter 5, Galatians 5 verse 1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. So he's been talking to them about uh, turning back or repenting because they were bewitched by Judaizers who claimed to be Christians but were false teachers and led them astray by teaching them they should obey the Old Testament law when Jesus Christ our Lord has fulfilled the Old Covenant through his life, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and promise of return. He has fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Covenant concerning Uh, the, the will of the Father. So now we are saved by faith in him only, by the grace of God that comes when a person lives by faith. So we're talking about freedom here. Jesus set us free by his word. Jesus told his disciples, he told everyone, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's the truth of the new covenant that sets us free. And we have to stand firm on this. If you don't stand firm on the truth of the word of God, you will drift away and begin adding error, customs, traditions, teachings of men to uh, your doctrine, and it will lead you away from the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ and make us slaves again, because if we try to obey the law, we end up being slaves to sin once again. Verse number two, behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you received circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. So they were trying to make the Gentiles get circumcised in order to follow Jesus. And Paul's clearly telling them, no, you shouldn't do that. It won't help you at all. Verse three, and and I testify again to every man who receives circumcision It is under obligation to keep the whole law. So if you embrace the old covenant, then you've got to live by every standard of the old covenant. If you break one law, you're under condemnation. That's the freedom we have in Christ has set us free by the law of spirit of life, has set us free from the law of sin and death. That's Romans 8. Verse 4, you have been severed from Christ you who are seeking to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. So this is a serious problem. If you seek to be justified by keeping the Old Testament law, then you uh, are cut off from the Lord Jesus Christ. And his grace is no longer available. You have fallen from it. See, it's possible to fall from grace. No matter what you've heard teachers teach, these are... These are uh, deceptive times. We've got to avoid deception. If you turn away from the grace of God, the faith in the New Testament doctrine, you can fall into that trap of living by the law. And if you do, you get cut off from grace. Verse 5, for we, through the Spirit by faith, see, through the Holy Spirit, that's the grace of God by faith, that's the faith he gives us, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. Righteousness only comes by grace through faith and no other way, not by keeping the Old Testament law. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. So there you have it, faith working through love. And it doesn't matter if you go you go get circumcised or or if, if you're uncircumcised as a Gentile, neither one concerning circumcision means anything. But it's our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ 
and his agape love that flows in us, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit that, that mean everything. Verse 7, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? So here's another example. You can start out correctly and then turn away from the truth and stop obeying it. That's what happened to this, a number of the people, at least in the church at Corinth, Pentecostal Christians, who started out right but ended up being deceived to go after obedience to the law once again. Verse, verse 8, this persuasion did not come from him who calls you. This isn't from the Lord to turn away, to keep the Old Testament law and to fall from grace. Verse 9, a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. We've had that exhortation throughout the New Testament over and over again. You, if you let error into your life, it will spread not only in you, but to other people in the church. Verse 10, I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will adopt no other view, but the one who is disur disturbing you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. So Paul is speaking judgment, condemnation on the, the, the false teacher. Verse 11, but if I, brother, that I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Then the stumbling block of the cross has been abolished. I wish that those who are troubling you would even mutilate themselves, meaning don't stop at circumcision, but just cut everything off. He does not think highly of these false teachers teaching these Pentecostal believers to go back to the Old Testament, to go back to circumcision. And many of them were doing it so they wouldn't be persecuted by other Jews. That was their motivation. But the cross, the message of the cross, dying to self to follow Jesus, denying yourself, to do the will of the Father. This must be our standard. Okay, verse 13. For you were called to freedom, brethren, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. The word of God sets us free. The Holy Spirit sets us free. But if we go back to the law, to keeping a law, to, to being saved by our works, that's our flesh, our carnal nature. And the, the, only the wisdom of the world will come forth, not the wisdom of God that produces the fruit of the Spirit, but rather the factions and fighting and carnality of the world. Verse 16, verse 14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We've heard this before, uh, that the two greatest commandments are love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Concerning people, this is how we walk out the law of God, by love, by the agape love of God to everyone as we love ourselves. But if you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. See, the fruit of the wisdom of the world is division and brokenness and bitterness and unforgiveness. And this manifests when we turn away from grace to try to keep the law once again. Okay, verse 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. The only hope that we have to avoid carnality and the fruit of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. So we know the opposition that our carnal nature, our human nature has toward the Holy Spirit, toward the Word of God. Our carnal nature and our lusts of our flesh do not want to cooperate. They're, they're going in the opposite direction. We can't please God by walking in the flesh. 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. See, the power of God, the, 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 the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from that law of sin and death. We have to walk in the Spirit to be victorious. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident. And here's a whole list of them. This is what you see when you look at the carnal nature. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, and enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we see those things all the time out among the people, and you know that's true, and even in the churches you see this kind of fruit. But what is the fruit of the Spirit? Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law. When God manifests his grace through us and the fruit of the Spirit, you will see the outcome of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you see the fruit of, fle of the flesh, you will see all those other things. It's this, such a simple definition, you will know them by their fruit. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we really are disciples of Jesus, if we have denied ourselves to follow him, if we cling to trust and rely on him, our faith is in him alone. Our first love is, is the Lord. Then we have put to death or crucified our carnal nature. That's what it says here. We need to be dead every day to our carnal nature and only alive by the Spirit. Verse 25, last two verses. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. We've got to, we've got to walk in the power of the Spirit since He is our life. We only live by the Spirit, so we have to walk according to the fruit of the Spirit, by His grace, by faith, not by works. If we get end up in the, the snare of works religion, we end up being broken and divided and bitter. And this is what the New Testament doctrine is. We see it all throughout the New Testament. Every day we are, we are piling on more important understanding of the doctrine of the church. We can't go back to our carnal nature for any solution, any dead religion. And that's what living by the law is. There's no life in living by the law. It's the human nature trying to please God. But living by grace and faith is totally different. We're dependent on the Holy Spirit to give us life and to give us the power to obey him. And we need to preach this hold it up high as our standard, and hold people accountable to turn away from the things of this world and the works of the flesh in order to walk in the Spirit. All right, God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow.